Welcome everyone, my name is Sergei Snegirov and this is the third lecture of my basic game design course. Today we will talk about level design in games and we will learn the principles and logic by which we can build the design of our games like professionals. In essence, level design refers to creating levels, stages or missions within a game. But this description barely scratches the surface of what level design embodies. It's not merely about placing objects, enemies or environmental artwork. It's a more profound and intricate process. It's about crafting experiences. Imagine level design as the art of shaping the player's adventure. It's about constructing the narrative pathway they walk through, not just in terms of the physical space within the game, but also in how they experience the story being told. The level is where the game's story, mechanics and art converge to create a memorable experience. Consider a level in a game like a chapter in a book. Each chapter has a beginning where players are introduced to new elements and challenges. There's a middle, where these elements are explored and interacted with, and an ending, often culminating in a significant challenge or a pivotal narrative moment. The level's designer's job is to make this journey as engaging as possible. But it's not just about linear progression. A well-designed level offers players choices and paths to explore while guiding them toward the intended narrative or gameplay goals. It's about creating an environment that feels alive and responsive to the player's actions. Think of how levels in games like The Legend of Zelda or Dark Souls are designed. They aren't just spaces to traverse, they are puzzles to solve, stories to unravel, and worlds to immerse oneself in. The goal is to avoid extremes, neither too easy nor frustratingly hard. The challenge, akin to waves, should undulate, ensuring player engagement and accomplishment. You need to define your approach before you start level design placement. And here you have several options that you can learn from famous examples. A prime example is found in the Resident Evil series, particularly Resident Evil 4. This game adjusts the difficulty based on the player's performance. If the player dies frequently, the game reduces the number of enemies in subsequent attempts. Conversely, if the player is breezing through levels, it subtly ramps up the challenge. This dynamic adjustment keeps the game engaging for players of varying skill levels without breaking immersion. The Super Mario Bros. levels are designed to introduce challenges progressively. Early levels are more straightforward, teaching the player basic mechanics. As the game progresses, levels become more complex, combining these mechanics in challenging ways. The infamous water levels or the introduction of more complex enemies like Hammer Bros exemplify this scaling which adds variety and escalating challenges while remaining fair and engaging. A classic example can be seen in Portal and Portal 2 by Valve. These games excel in gradually introducing players to new mechanics and combining them increasingly complexly. Early levels are simple. Focusing on understanding the essential use of the portal gun. As players progress, levels demand more sophisticated uses of the portals, spatial reasoning and timing. This steady increase in complexity helps players develop their skills naturally, without feeling overwhelmed. Dark Souls, a game known for its difficulty, skillfully balances challenge with rest. Between its notoriously tricky sections, bonfires are acting as safe spaces. This allows players to recuperate, reinforcing a sense of progression and achievement. It's a rhythmic balance of tension and relief, preventing frustration. Games like Bloodborne implement a risk versus reward system to balance difficulty. Engaging in high-risk combat scenarios can lead to greater rewards. This system encourages players to push their limits, but also provides the option to play it safe. It's a balance that motivates players to improve and engage more deeply with the game mechanics. Games like The Elder Scrolls Skyrim 
offer another approach. Here the world is open and players can choose their paths. This player-driven difficulty allows individuals to tailor their experiences to their comfort level. The Mass Effect series offers settings that range from narrative-focused, where combat is easier, to hardcore modes that significantly ramp up combat challenges. This approach respects player choice and caters to a broader audience, from those seeking a story to those desiring intense gameplay. The Last of Us series uses narrative elements to balance gameplay difficulty. Intense combat sequences are connected with quieter, story-driven sections, where players learn more about the characters and the world. This flow maintains engagement without overwhelming the player. Balancing difficulty is not just about enemy placement or the number of obstacles. It's about understanding the player's journey through the game. It involves crafting a narrative flow where challenges rise and fall, maintaining interest and providing a sense of accomplishment. This approach requires a deep understanding of game mechanics, player psychology and storytelling. Implement checkpoints and safe systems can strongly affect the perception of difficulty. Games like Celeste offer frequent checkpoints, acknowledging the game's severe difficulty and allowing players to quickly retry challenging sections, reducing frustration while maintaining the challenge. Difficulty in level design is about more than just combat or enemies. The environment itself can present challenges. In The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the environment plays a key role. Whether terrain and physics create situations where players must think and adapt. For example, climbing a mountain during rain is more challenging than in clear weather. This adds a layer of strategic decision-making based on the environment. In modern game development, player feedback is crucial for balancing difficulty. Developers often release better version or updates based on player experiences. Fortnite is an example of continuous updates and player feedback shaping the game's balance, keeping the gameplay fresh and appropriately challenging. Balancing difficulty in level design is an ongoing dialogue between the designer and the player. It's about understanding not just the mechanics of the game, but the people who play it. Every player is different, and their experience can vary widely. The goal of the level designer is to craft a challenging, rewarding and, most importantly, enjoyable journey for a wide range of players. Level design cannot exist without other elements. As a level designer, you should focus on another part of game design that is at your disposal – environmental art. Environmental art is what gives life to the game's world. It's about the aesthetics, the textures, the lighting, the 3D models. These elements create the visual appeal and immersion of the game. The environment artists are like the painters and sculptors of the video game world, carefully crafting every visual detail to create a believable, engaging and often beautiful environment for players to explore. A games with exceptional environmental art can be really inspiring. Think of the visuals in the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt or the intricate dystopian world of Bioshock Infinite. The environmental art sets the tone and atmosphere in these games, contributing significantly to the overall gaming experience. Level design should continue the environmental design. It should highlight the setting and maintain the mood. Only then will the level design be considered good when it performs both practical and aesthetic functions. Level design is a structural foundation of the game's world. It's about creating spaces that facilitate gameplay, give the player's journey, present challenges and help progress the narrative. A level designer must consider how players interact with the environment, move through space and utilize the game's mechanics. It's about creating a flow within the game, using the environment to create a path for the player and strategically placing elements like enemies, obstacles and rewards. 
For instance, the intricate level designs in Dark Souls are not just about aesthetics, they are crafted to challenge players, often forcing them to be cautious and observant. The levels are designed to create a sense of dread and anticipation with traps and enemies positioned to surprise and challenge the player. Moreover, level design often involves creating an intuitive and navigable space. It's about leading the player without making it obvious that they are being led. This is where level design overlaps with environmental storytelling. The placement of objects, the architecture of space and the progression through the environment can all tell a story in subtle ways. An example is in Half-Life 2, where the environment and level design work together to give the player, tell a story and create an immersive experience without requiring extensive dialogue or cutscenes. The game uses visual cues, level layout and environmental details to lead the player and reveal the narrative. Intricate level design goes beyond the basic layout of environments. It involves crafting spaces that are functional for gameplay and rich in narrative depths, player engagement and creativity. A professional level designer will always use every piece of space effectively, coordinated it with the mechanics and ideas. Within a limited space, when we want to make it larger than it is, we use one basic approach – multi-layered levels. One of my favorite games with this approach is Dishonored. In Dishonored, the levels are designed with multiple layers and pathways, offering players a variety of approaches to complete their objectives. The game's levels are complex with interconnected areas, encouraging exploration and experimentation. Players can sneak through buildings, traverse rooftops or find hidden passages, all adding depth and replayability to the game. It works nicely here, mainly because it fits the main mechanic of the teleports. But what if I want to use something different, something else? Let's return to the Dark Souls series, renowned for its interconnected level design. The game world is like a massive, intertwined puzzle, where areas look back on themselves, creating a sense of discovery and surprise. This design makes the world feel interconnected and rewards exploration and memorization. In Bioshock, the underwater city of Rapture is not just a backdrop, but an integral part of the game's story. The environment tells its story through audio logs, visual cues and architecture. The art deco design, the dilapidated structures and the propaganda posters combine the immerse the player in the game's dystopian world. Breath of the Wild reimagines open-world design by creating a dynamic environment that interacts with the player's actions. The game world responds to player choices and actions, whether chopping down trees to create bridges or using the game's physics engine to solve puzzles. This dynamic interaction makes the environment a key player in the game's design. In The Last of Us Part 2, the environment reflects the story's emotional tone from abandoned homes that tell stories of the inhabitants' final moments to the overground ruins that signify the world's post-apocalyptic state. The level design serves as a narrative tool, enhancing the story's emotional impact. As you see, level design can't be independent. It needs to be a part of all other elements. You should play with it based on your ideas and the mood of your game. Now that we know the basic level design approaches, let's talk about the principles they stand for. What should we look for when creating our levels? One of the most crucial is purpose. Each level in a game should serve a clear and distinct purpose. This could be advancing the story, introducing new gameplay mechanics, presenting a unique challenge, or combining these elements. In games like Uncharted or Tomb Raider, each level is designed to advance the story. Players journey through different environments, each revealing a new story chapter. The level design aligns with the narrative arc, ensuring that the environment and its challenges reflect and enhance the unfolding story. The game portal excels in introducing and then gradually expanding upon 
its core mechanic, the portal gun. Early levels are designed to teach players the basics. As the game progresses, levels become more complex, integrating new elements like momentum and light bridges, requiring players to think creatively and apply what they've learned in new ways. Celeste is a brilliant example of level designed to provide specific challenges. Each chapter introduces new elements – wind, moving platforms or hostile creatures, each adding a unique twist to the game's core platforming mechanics. The levels are designed to test the player's skills and adaptability. The level design combines mechanics, story and exploration seamlessly. The purpose of a level should be evident to the player, whether it's understood from the level's design, its place in the game's world or its contribution to the overarching story. A level with a clear purpose provides direction and motivation, guiding the player through the game's journey. Moreover, purpose-driving level design ensures that each part of the game feels necessary and engaging. It avoids the pitfalls content, where levels exist merely to extend playtime without adding meaningful experiences. Another fundamental principle in level design is motivating player movement. A well-designed level not only facilitates but also encourages player exploration and progression. For this we can use different techniques. A classic technique is the use of visual cues or landmarks. For instance, in Journey the distant mountain is a constant visual goal for players. In Dark Souls, the level design frequently employs grand structures or unique landscapes as point of interest, guiding players across its interconnected world. Encouraging exploration is key. Skyrim is an excellent example where players are motivated to explore through the promise of hidden dungeons, rare artifacts or unexpected encounters. The level design rewards curiosity, making exploration a core part of the player's experience. Effective pathfinding is crucial. In Half-Life 2, for example, levels are designed to lead players along a specific path without making it obvious. The game uses lighting, architecture and environmental storytelling to get players, ensuring they are never lost but still feel in control of their journey. Interactivity within the environment can serve as a strong motivator. In The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the interactive elements like destructible objects, climbable surfaces and physics-based puzzles engage players and encourage them to interact with the world around them, often leading to discoveries. Narrative elements can also guide player movement. In Bioshock, the narrative unfolds through the environment, with audio logs, signage and environmental changes guiding players through Rapture. The story creates a sense of urgency and curiosity, driving players to explore further. It requires a deep understanding of human psychology and player behavior. The goal is to create an organic and inviting world where every path obstacle and item feels rightly placed to get the player's journey. I adore level design. It looks so amazing when Resident Evil uses narrow corridors, sudden open areas and blight corners to induce suspense and surprise. The level design manipulates special elements to evoke emotions, keeping players on edge or when in Journey developers use of color, light and shadow to make clear paths and points of interest. In games, the arrangement of enemies, the architecture of the ruins and the placement of items all tell a story, providing context and depth to the game world. In Hollow Knight we can find interconnected level design that encourage to explore, backtrack and discover new passes as they acquire new abilities. The layout of the levels becomes a puzzle for the player to solve. I talked about more calm genres like RPG and story-based adventures, but we had a few extra things when we discussed action games and shooters. In this type of game, we have a specific aspect of level design that's particularly crucial, and this is a cover placement. In tactical shooters like 
Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Cover placement is essential for creating strategic depths. The environment offers various cover options, each presenting different advantages and vulnerabilities. This encourages players to think tactically about their position and the position of their enemies. Effective cover placement also enhances player movement. In Gears of War, the cover is not only for protection, but also for maneuvering and flanking. The game's roddy gun mechanic, combined with the cover system, allows players to quickly move between covers, creating dynamic firefights and opportunities for strategic positioning. The placement of cover can transform environment into a tactical playground. This variety allows for different combat styles, from long-range engagements to close-quarter battles, making each encounter unique. Introducing dynamic or destructible cover adds another layer of strategy. In Battlefield series, the destructible environments mean that cover is not always permanent, forcing players to adapt their tactics as the battlefield evolves. Cover placement also plays a crucial role in how AI enemies engage the player. In Uncharted series, enemies use cover effectively, flanking and suppressing the player, which requires strategic thinking and quick reflexes to overcome. It's essential to balance cover with open spaces. Too much cover can make a level feel cramped and restrict movement, while too little can lead to unfair challenges. Games like Halo strike this balance, offering open areas with strategically placed cover, allowing for ranged battles and close-up engagements. Today's gamers expect levels that are not only visually stunning, but also richly interactive and immersive. Level design must evolve to meet these expectations, offering players new experiences and challenges. In summary, motivating player movement is an art form in itself. It combines aesthetics, psychology and gameplay mechanics to create a world players want to explore and engage in. It's what transforms a game from a series of tasks into a compelling journey. After today's lecture, you will better understand game design and can be guided by this knowledge in creating levels for your games. And the following final lecture of the course will be devoted to analytics and metrics that help maintain and update your game after release. Thanks for watching.